Hi, welcome to the first video for computational linguistics. Today I'm going to be talking about not only what the class is about, but how we're going to run the class. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll be able to figure out the kinds of things that we're going to do in the class and what you need to do to be successful in the class. You may already be aware of many applications of computational linguistics. Many of these applications use machine learning to be successful, from talking to your Alexa device, to Watson winning trivia games, to machine translation helping you figure out what is meant when someone speaks to you in German and how to translate that into Chinese. All of these are pretty big advances in computational linguistics brought about by recent revolutions in machine learning. We're going to be talking about many of these things in this class. But when you compare the advances that have been made in other applications of machine learning, such as self-driving cars or playing chess or Go, we significantly lag behind when it comes to applications in natural language processing. And in applications like driving a car or playing chess or playing Go, we are at superhuman levels. But if you are to call up any call center and talk to one of the automated agents there, the effectiveness of those techniques lag far behind a precocious five-year-old. So what makes computational linguistics so hard? Why is it that we're having such a hard time achieving the same superhuman performance that we have in these other tasks on natural language tasks? That's one of the big things that we'll talk about in this course, discussing not only the applications, why they're difficult, but why the techniques from machine learning are falling behind when it comes to these applications. So what does it mean to have a computational linguistics application or a natural language processing application? We'll use both of these terms interchangeably throughout the course. Although computational linguistics falls more on the linguistic side and natural language processing falls more on the computer science side, but there's quite a bit in the intersection and many times in the course we'll use them interchangeably. So what do these terms mean? It's a very cross-disciplinary field. We're using techniques from statistics to understand large data sets. We're using tools from machine learning and computer science to create new systems that take that data and recreate actions on a new data set. We need insights from linguistics to understand why our systems are making bad choices or making bad outputs. And we need linguistics to provide annotations and structure for our data that form the foundation of our machine learning applications. We also need psychologists and sociologists to understand how humans react in particular situations. Emotion and language are fairly tightly intertwined, so if we want machines to be able to understand language, oftentimes they also need to be able to understand emotion. And while much of this course will be talking about English data, because English is the language that we'll use for communication in this class, Natural language processing and computational linguistics is not just about English processing or English linguistics. It's about every language on the world or languages uh, even beyond our solar system. And for that, you need to have expertise in specific languages. How do you very quickly build up a system for a language that you may not speak and that you have very little data for? How can you create a system that is effective on a new language. And for that you need language specific expertise or you need techniques that transcend any specific language. We'll talk about a variety of natural language applications from understanding why the LY in ally and quickly are different, this is called morphology, to understanding the difference between water the flowers and uh, drink the water. They have different parts of speech. We'll also understand how saw the astronomer with the telescope is different from saw the sun with the telescope. This is uh, differences in syntax. And we'll also do things like translate my hovercraft is full of eels into Hungarian. So that's what the course is about. I also want to talk a little bit about how we're going to run the course. So first of all, you're watching this video, good job. That's the first step. 
And this is how we're going to do most of our classes. I'm going to provide lectures online. You're expected to watch them before the appropriate class. And then you'll come to class prepared to ask questions, having understood as best you can the material, and we'll be able to work on examples. I'll be able to answer questions, and this is a relatively large class, so I'll be able to get to know you better as a result. It helps to bring a laptop to class if you have one. Uh, this way you'll be able to access materials, you'll be able to run examples, or to use Python interactively within the classroom. Because we won't be lecturing in class, most of the time our classroom experience will be more interactive, and so you'll want to have your laptop so you can work on homework or run examples. Because this is a graduate course, you will have different backgrounds. Some of you will be from linguistics, some of you will be from computer science, some of you will be from the iSchool, some of you will be from completely other places, and that's great. However, we're going to have some common expectations for what a student in this class should be able to do. You should understand basic matrix notation, what it means to multiply a matrix by a vector, what it means to transpose a matrix. You'll also need to be able to take gradients, derivatives, basic calculus. In addition to all that, the single most important skill that you'll need is an understanding of probability. We'll be providing materials and doing a brief review of probability this week, so watch that material. Make sure that you're comfortable with it. That is the single most important mathematical prereq you'll need for this course. If you've taken a machine learning course, uh, especially my machine learning course, you'll be just fine. That will provide most of the mathematical background that you'll need. If you haven't taken a machine learning course, that's also fine. As long as you have these basic mathematical prerequisites down, you should be okay. In terms of computer skills, you need to be able to program in Python. We'll be using Python 3 for this course, and you'll need to be able to write basic programs in Python. You need to understand what classes and methods are in Python. You'll need to be able to do things like writing loops and creating functions. You'll also need to be able to understand list comprehensions, especially when I write them. You'll need to be able to interact with data files, how to extract data from a file, how to save data to a file, and you need to be able to interact with a Linux or Unix command line. In addition to the course webpage, you also need to sign up for Piazza. Piazza is a homegrown platform for course communication. It was developed by a former UMB student. I think that it's a great way for people to interact with each other. You can post questions there even anonymously, and it is much better than the Elms tools that are available by default. So we'll be using Piazza for our course communications. We'll be transitioning off Elms as quickly as possible. Again, you also need to keep track of the course web page. You probably used it to find this video, but make sure that you visit that frequently. You'll be able to find the readings. You'll be able to find these videos. You'll be able to find homework assignments there. I mentioned homeworks, so homeworks will be assigned through the course webpage. You have seven late days to use on any homeworks as you see fit, no questions asked, but once you use those seven late days, homeworks will only be accepted at the discretion of the teaching assistants and then only for half credit. If you have special needs, if you have holidays that will interfere with the course schedule, if you have a wedding, if you have accessibility needs, let me know immediately at the beginning of the course so I can make appropriate plans for that. Please do not come to me in the middle of the course. I need to know about it now so I can plan for it. Natural language processing and machine learning are both very quick moving fields. As a result, we'll be using a brand new textbook from Jacob Eisenstein at Georgia Tech. This is available for free online. I've linked to it from the course webpage. Please do the readings associated with each week before you watch the video, or you can watch the video first and then read the readings, but in any event, do it before you come to class. Again, we'll be using Piazza for course communication. Send all of your questions there. Don't send email to me directly. I get a lot of email. I don't want your messages to get lost in the sea of other messages that I get. This way, other people in the class can help answer questions. 
the teaching assistants can help answer questions. And this is also how I track participation points in part. There are other ways I track that as well. So please do use Piazza for communication. You can also post questions anonymously, which is something that you can't do over email. You should be using this for both administrative questions and technical questions. One thing that I want to emphasize is that when you ask a technical question, when a piece of code isn't working, make sure that you ask correctly. So first, explain what you're trying to do. Second, provide a minimal example that anyone else should be able to run. So start with a fresh clone of the homework repository, run a simple command, modify the code slightly, run that command again, and the problem should be visible. If the TAs cannot reproduce your error, it will be much, much harder for them to help you. You should also explain what you think should be happening and what you get instead. Sometimes when people think they have a problem, they don't really have a problem at all. It's just a misunderstanding of what they think should be happening. Always provide your output, especially if you get an error message, that will be very helpful. And finally, explain what else you've tried. If you explain what you've done in your thought process, that helps the TAs understand where your brain is so that they can tailor their answer to the help that you need. So I'm looking forward to getting to know you on the first day of class, but before then, I want to introduce myself a little bit. So uh, my name is Jordan. Please call me Jordan. If uh, you want to be a little bit more formal, Professor Jordan is, is also okay. I, I don't particularly like my uh, last name, Boyd Graver, so I prefer not to be called that, but people cite me as that, so I can't get rid of that name. Uh, one thing that causes confusion is that my UMD directory ID is Ying, Y-I-N-G, uh, so that's my uh, family name, uh, and it's also my UMD email, so if you see Ying, that's me. So I'm an associate professor here at the University of Maryland. Previously, I was at the University of Colorado. Colorado is also where I was born. Uh, although I did most of my growing up in Iowa, a small town called Keokuk. I was briefly in high school in Arkansas, and then I did my undergrad at California, uh, grad school in New Jersey. Then uh, I came to Maryland for a postdoc. I was faculty at Colorado for a while, and then I came back to Maryland to become faculty. This is the fourth time that I've taught this course, or a very similar course, but this year is going to be quite different. I'm incorporating more deep learning than I have in previous iterations of the course, so this will be somewhat new for me as well. So uh, please be patient with me, uh, especially as we're going over the deep learning components of the course, as that will be the first time that I've taught this specific course using those deep learning concepts. Throughout the course, you'll get to know a little bit about the things that I research. Uh, in particular, my research is how humans and machines can interact with each other through language. So I do a lot of machine learning, a lot of human-computer interaction, but all of it revolves around language. So that's why I'm uh, really interested in this course and the topics that we'll talk about. Some of the applications that I work on are topic models, so you'll be learning about that uh, early on in the course. I also work on question answering. That will be the big project that we work on at the end of the course. And I also work on machine translation. We'll touch a little bit on that at the end of the course. So you'll see all of these things in this course, and I will flavor those sections of the course with my own research. Uh, we have uh, two wonderful TAs for this course. Uh, they'll be introducing themselves in the first class, and they'll also be posting to Piazza soon to figure out when they will hold their office hours. We'll be using Python for this course. Python is a very easy language to learn if you haven't been exposed to it before. And another reason that we're using Python is it has a great library called the Natural Language Toolkit that integrates a lot of data sets and resources very easily. This lets us very quickly get up to speed in computational linguistics. While I'll give the first chapter of the NLTK book as a reading assignment, don't hesitate to ask questions about NLPK on Piazza or elsewhere. So that's it for our whirlwind introduction. For the first class, please be prepared. Uh, come to class with NLTK and Python installed on your computer. Have a look at homework one. Make sure that you're all set to do that. And 
be prepared to work through some simple examples of both Python and probability that will serve as the foundation for the rest of this course. Thanks and see you soon.